Hello, everyone. My name is Jesse Fairbanks, and I'm a Futures Programmer with Doc NYC. I'm very pleased to welcome the director and producer of The Places That Make Us, Carla Murphy. Also joining us is the, pro is the producer, Alexandra Nikolcha, and executive producer, Jad Abumrad. Thank you so much to Carla, Alexandra, and Jad for joining us and for sharing the places that make us with the Doc NYC audience. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thanks. Um, so Carla, just to get started, can you tell us how you met Ian and Tiffany and Julius and what it was about their work to revitalize Youngtown that motivated you to tell this story? Yes. Um, before I do that, I just want to mention one thing real quick. Um, I think this is the first year that Doc NYC is doing a revenue share with the ticket sales. And um, we thought it would be really cool to donate that to Youngstown. And I was talking with Ian and Tiffany, and they mentioned that they've been having a hard time raising money to plant trees, which is you kind of see some of that in the last few scenes of the film. For whatever reason, foundations just don't think it's a priority. Um, so we thought, you know, we could donate the money to that because there's so much evidence that shows, especially now, you know, just how much trees benefit community health and well-being. Um, so thank you to everyone who bought a ticket. Some of that money will go directly to a tree or hopefully many trees in Youngstown. So that's, that's one wonderful. Thing. Thank you so much for sharing, Carla. And um, I think everybody in the audience probably just sat up a little bit straighter, feeling like they helped contribute to Ian's very admirable work. Um, so going back to your question, I um, was sent to Youngstown for my work for, you know, I usually do news documentaries, and this was back in 2016, and they sent me there to do a piece looking at some of the revitalization efforts going on there and jobs and, you know, it was also an election year and how is this post-industrial town faring. Um, and so that's when I first met Ian and Tiffany. Um, I did not meet Julius on that trip. I did actually try to reach out to him, but um, you know, one of the things that struck me immediately about Youngstown is that there's so much natural beauty that, you know, you just forget, like you think of these post-industrial blighted towns and that's all you think of are the abandoned mills. And there's a waterfall right in the middle of town and, you know, there's Mill Creek Park. And so I was really struck by that. And then also just meeting Ian and Tiffany and this whole generation of people doing this work, they're very different from their parents' generation who, um, you know, watched their town crumble around them and are still haunted and traumatized by that. Um, and Ian and Tiffany and Julius and, you know, everyone doing the work in Youngstown, they have no memories of the heyday. Um, they kind of grew up in that rubble. Um, and because of that, I think they were able to see a new way forward. So I was really drawn to that idea. Um, and I think it was when I was driving around with Tiffany on that first shoot for work, and she was like taking me to all the different houses and you know to different stages of rehab. And I think she even mentioned it. She was like, um, or I, I just thought it would be really cool to see one of these houses transform like from beginning to end. And that could be a really beautiful arc for a film because when you first walk into these homes, um, it's really heartbreaking. You know, there's all of these remnants of love and loss. And to me, those homes are so symbolic of Youngstown. Um, and so that's kind of the idea that started to percolate back then. And also who doesn't love, you know, a good home renovation reveal. <laughs> so um, that was kind of what's got the whole film started. And there are some amazing home renovation reveals, especially the one at the end that Tiffany is particularly uh, attached to. Um, my question is next is for Alexandra and for Jad. Um, you know, raising money for a film that is about a post-industrial American town kind of could be anywhere USA, given the, the world and the climate that we live in right now. And unless you really get to see Ian and Julius and Tiffany and all the other incredible subjects of the film and their passion, it can be kind of you know, um, it can be a hard sell. And so my question is, what was it like for you as you were going around trying to recruit funding for the film and partners? Um, did you, was that a struggle? Am I just projecting or was this a really easy film to pitch? Yeah, I mean, I think both. Um, I think like any film um, documentary, you're not, you know, when you're pitching it, this is not gonna 
bring back your money. We're not selling it like, you know, give us some money and you're going to see it come back to you and ticket sales. Like this is all, you know, this is um, more donations that we're asking for. And we're looking for people who connect with the heart of the film. And so it's a process, but in doing that, I think it's so much about um, as we do that, we learn kind of what resonates with people as well. Um, and the interesting thing was to see how many people from Youngstown were all over the country. You know, we met somebody in Youngstown who opened a bar in Brooklyn. We met, um, I was having dinner with a friend who took a writing class in Brooklyn with a former senator in Ohio who then had a deep connection with Youngstown and started um, and became one of our, you know, patrons for the film. Um, so I think what was nice is to tell people, you know, who are connected to the region that this, we're not telling the same old story that you hear in the headlines of these, you know, blight, you know, this urban blight and people who have um, given up. This is about hope. This is about hard work. This is about grassroots and local ingenuity. And I think that was something that, you know, gave us a uh, leg up in terms of finding our funders and having these wonderful conversations with people who you meet all, like I said, all over the country who would then get choked up talking about their memories of Youngstown and we're happy to see um, a new take. And I'll just sort of say, just from uh, my vantage point, you know, as the executive producer, and I was, I was, uh, I didn't go on the shoots. I just saw how hard Carla and Alexandra worked to make this film. Uh, it, I don't think you were projecting, Jesse, when you said that that it, that it was difficult. I mean, I think that any if any documentary gets made, it's sort of a miracle. Uh, it takes so much dedication and uh, so much self sacrifice. Uh, and then ultimately, hopefully, and I think this is true with this film, uh, it all somehow vanishes in the experience of watching it. You watch it and you fall in love with these characters within five minutes. And it, and then it feels like, of course, this should have been a documentary. But there was about a year and a half where it, it was uh, just a lot of hard work. Uh, and pitching it was tricky because it is, this is a quiet film. And I think actually that's one of its real strengths. It's a very quiet meditative film. Uh, but I think, you know, as I think we've all, so many of us have grown up in places where we've had this sense that the, the story being told about that place is not our story, right? Uh, Youngstown is a place where it has an, a larger than life reputation. And there are so many young people in there where they don't feel like that's their story. And I think we can all relate to that. I certainly relate to that as somebody who grew up in the South, as an Arab guy in the South. Um, you've always felt oppressed by the story that has been placed on that place from the outside. So it's really kind of a great universal thing to see these young people shedding the ghosts of the past and, 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 and writing their own tale. Um, and so that's the part that was ultimately, I think, at least from my vantage point, universal. Yeah, I'd love what um, you just touched on there, uh, Jad, and also Carly, you mentioned in your earlier answer, I love the way the film juxtapos juxtapositions the older generation who grew up in the boom times of industrial jobs and then who have experienced, you know, an incredible slide in terms of financial security and faced the disappearance of the middle class and the trauma that they have with that and juxtaposing that with the younger generation who've never known, who came of age in the recession and in the middle of a pandemic um, and who look within to provide their own solutions. Um, so my question to you, Carla, is it sounds like, you know, Ian and Tiffany and Julius were all great and easy, not easy, but, you know, they understood why you wanted to tell the story. Was it a struggle to get the older members of Youngstown to participate in the film? Um, it wasn't actually. I mean, with Ian's parents, I mean, the very first thing that we filmed for this documentary was dinner with Ian and his family and his parents and with his dad, like showing me, you know, photos of the mill, um, which is such like a dad thing to do too. I love it. But um, that 
I think there are so few stories that are told about Youngstown and it's sort of what Jav is just saying that people just wanted to tell their story and tell everything that was happening there in a, in a very, you know, in, in a nuanced way. Um, I think that Ian's parents weren't, you know, they've never been interviewed before on camera and they just kind of told me these stories and, and were very honest and open about how they felt. Um, so yeah, no, it wasn't actually, a I think it's also because we just kept coming back. <laughs> you know, we, we showed up like, I don't know how many shoots, we had like 14 shoots over three years, maybe even more than that. And yeah, I think people got used to us hanging around and you know, trusted us. Um, so no, it wasn't difficult to tell that part of the story. You mentioned Ian's dad and there's this heart-wrenching moment when he says that he wishes he hadn't raised his family in, in Youngstown and um, it just, you know, leaves that percolating in the, in the atmosphere for us that if they hadn't have done that, then Ian and his sister wouldn't be there doing all the incredible work that they are. And um, if they had continued to follow the fact that there is a great migration out of cities like this. Um, so I just, just a really beautiful moment with Ian's dad and helped illuminate the much larger complexities that the community is facing. Um, this is a question for all of you. You know, the film is such a powerful testament to community engagement and the power of homegrown efforts. And I think it's really important to hear stories like this, especially right now in this climate um, when government resources are stretched thin or are non-existent. Um, but I am curious, and this is a challenging question, uh, but uh, do you worry that if people like Ian and Tiffany keep picking up the slack, is there any incentive for local or federal government programs to dig in and to help places like Youngstown? Um, the problems are so huge that, I mean, I, I, like they are picking up the slack, but there are, their problems are monumental. I mean, they do rely on government grants. They, I mean, they, it's, they're trying to rely on that less, but um, yeah, so it's almost like I, I can't even put those two together. I mean, there's so much work that still has to be done. Um, and, but what I, yeah, so I, hmm. <laughs> it is a challenging question. Um, does anyone else wanna? Okay. I mean, I, yeah, I wanna just add to what Carla, you know, Carla's answer. And, and in addition, it's, you know, part of like going there and I wanted, you know, we were trying to figure out like what makes people like Ian and Tiffany and Julia stay in Youngstown and stay so dedicated um, when sometimes the progress looks so small. And um, I think it is that if it's, you know, so much of their identity is tied to their home. And if that's their life, like they are gonna be the best advocates for themselves. They are gonna find the solutions. Um, so, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, uh, I'll answer your, your question in a kind of a opaque sort of way, because for me, what I think is so cool about this film is it has to do with time in a way. It, it, it isn't so much about, like there is something about we're in this moment of convulsive change in this country and we're all asking like what, how does one make change? What kind of change do we need? And that's, a, there are an infinity of answers to that question. But what I see in this film is I see um, people, I see that, that, there, that to save a community like Youngstown, it takes people staying and doing the work. And that work is so incremental and so like, millimeter at a time. And there's something deeply meditative about watching that unfold and realizing that, oh, this is, a, this is a way that you can make change in the world. It doesn't happen in these adrenaline shots of revolution where there's someone coming in from the outside and just disrupting everything. No, it's about very slowly fixing up a house and making this house a place that someone could come to rather than leaving. And there's something about the sort of the smallness and the narrowness and, and the measured pace of it that I think is almost radical in this moment. You know, it feels, it feels as revolutionary as some of the giant systemic changes we're talking about. So uh, for me, I think that the, it's precisely the tiny tininess of the changes that are being made that, um, that I think is so cool. Uh, so I don't know how that exactly relates to your question, but um, 
it seems to sort of cut at odds with the giant sweeping changes we think are needed. Well, it's also that, I mean, the, the changes might are, are small when you can look at what everything that needs to be done, but the changes that they're making affect people's lives um, immediately. And these are changes that are being made that the people want made. They're being asked, what is it that you want? And they want safe and beautiful and clean neighborhoods. And, you know, it's all about neighbors helping each other. And it's when you actually go there and see the work that's being done, like it's very infectious. I mean, I want you to reclaim the word infectious, but it's, um, you know, when we filmed the Pine View house clean out and, and other how we filmed a few different houses and everyone is, you know, coming together and do this work. And, you know, Alexander was filming one of these houses and I was just standing there. I'm like, I can't just stand here. <laughs> so I like literally went in the basement and hid in the dark and helped out. Like you just can't, help but want to pitch in. And I'm hoping like everyone in their own communities can figure out um, what they need and what they want and come together as a community to make that happen. Um, and I think just like uh, one other point is, yeah, part of showing this film is to show the great uh, resources within cities like Youngstown and to give platform to voice to then, yeah, what, 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 um, orchestrated, you know, what other efforts from federal, from state, you know, how can we all kind of work together and include the grassroots? And support those grassroots efforts. Yeah, and it is, it's such a beautiful film that weaves together, you know, these grassroots efforts, as you say, Carla, that you watch people walk into these homes and their lives are immediately changed. They now have security and safety and a place to sleep. Um, and with Julius, you see him as an entrepreneur that is moving into, you know, civic activism and who is also continuing to lead the charge with a homegrown business that is important to the community. Um, so my final question for all of you guys, and thank you for your take on the last one, is, uh, is there any kind of update that you can give the audience on how Julius is doing, how Tiffany and how Ian are doing? And um, I think we'd all love to hear about how they're feeling and how their work is going. Um, I think, Alexander, do you want to, I think you just spoke with Julius. Do you want to go first? Sure. I, yeah. Um, well, Julius um, and his wife, Jasmine, are pregnant um, with his first child. Um, and, uh, and actually, he, it, this week, it, um, you know, is anti-violence week in Youngstown. And um, so what we had filmed last time towards the end, that's in the end of the film where he's talking, giving his life story and talking about um, uh, in front of a group of people, he's doing that again. He did that again this year, but it was to, everybody was in their cars because it was COVID. But, um, you know, he, he says that City Hall um, is, is struggling, you know, it's still shut down, but that um, there is community, you know, shootings have gone up. Um, it's been hard to stay uh, connected, but he's like, there are still those people, those beacons in, in Youngstown that are pushing things forward. Um, business is slow, but he's doing okay. So he's hopeful. And, you know, Ian and Tiffany's work, they're doing more work than ever. Um, they're like, I mean, they've had to you know, switch up what they do. And instead of doing like two or three houses at a time, they're doing six houses at a time so that they can spread everyone out. Um, and yeah, they're, they're like working harder now than they were, but they, you know, were saying that it's kind of the calm before the storm, you know, these cities and so many places are just so vulnerable. And we still don't know the full impact, the economic impact, emotional impact of the pandemic. And so I think they're just like working their asses. I'll try to just make as much you know difference as they can um, until that until you know that happens and just hopefully um, you know just make as many improvements as they can. Um, but you know it's like for so many places, it's just it's 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 going to just be very difficult. Um, the one thing that I will say is that places like Youngstown, they've had you know decades of bad news and there is something about people in Young Sound that have this kind of resilient attitude and so you know hopefully they'll be able to um, come out a little stronger in the end of it. Um, I, I do before we go I do want to mention one New York connection to Young Sound that I think is really cool and there is some home 
um, video footage and you see an amusement park. And that is the Idora Park. Um, and it was burned down, I think like in the 80s, it burned down in Youngstown. But the carousel was saved and auctioned off. And that carousel is in Brooklyn Bridge Park. No That's way. Yeah. And um, I think Jane, she, you know, she restored it. It's like a 1922 carousel. Um, but um, I think she passed away this summer of um, mm -hmm. cancer, not from COVID. But anyway, I just always thought that was such a cool New York, Youngstown connection. That is an amazing through line. Um, I have spent many an hours next to that carousel, as I'm sure most audience members have. Um, thank you so much for making a film about the resiliency of the human spirit and the ingenuity of Americans. Uh, it's a message that I think we desperately need right now. So I would like to thank Carla Murthy so much for directing this film and for joining us, to Jad Aburand for executive producing the film and for being here, and to Alexandra Nikolchev, who uh, is a producer but also was behind the camera and uh, was a woman wearing many hats. Thank you all so much for joining us and for sharing your film, The Place That Makes Us with Doc and Wysey. Thank you, thank you for watching.